Here's a look at uh, the two houses. So you can see the great room in three dimensions, all the furniture that we had throughout the house, and then here's a sped up video that shows you that we're instrumenting every room, we're measuring temperatures and gas concentrations throughout the house, and most importantly, we're providing you visuals of things that you never get to see in reality. You don't get to see what's going on before you arrive. We're giving you the opportunity to see what's going on before you arrive. What is the victim in that back bedroom potentially experiencing? That's what they would be seeing if they were sitting next to that bed with their head on the floor. You can see the fire become ventilation limited and run out of oxygen. You can see the conditions go black in all the rooms. You can see what you would experience if you were behind a closed door in a bedroom much better than the one below it, which is an open door. You can see the impact of opening the door, opening a window. What would happen if we opened that window? What happened if we put a hole in the roof? What would happen if we opened the back window? We can do all these things, and we've done them for you, and we're giving you the material to learn from. Do you see the smoke lift in these back rooms once the ventilation gets made? You don't, because they're not in the flow path. They don't get the oxygen into those back rooms. Those of you that saw Dan or earlier, this is really important. If you have a room like this out in the open, this is what your fire growth curve looks like. Ignition, growth, fully developed, decay. That's really what we're doing in our firefighter training buildings. We can't do this in our firefighter training buildings, where you get growth, then you get a decay stage, and there's a ventilation, and then you get growth, and then it's fully developed, and then you get decay. That's what happens when you take this and put it in a structure and ventilate the structure. <clears throat> this is even too simple. Here's a fire growth curve where two things happen. The front door gets open and a hole gets cut in the roof. It's important to know that there isn't one growth stage. There isn't one decay stage. There isn't one fully developed stage. Don't get thrown off by all this stuff. It's actually pretty simple. The fire ignites. It grows. At some point, it transitions from a fuel-limited fire to a ventilation-limited fire. As it makes that transition, it's running out of oxygen, and then you get your first decay stage, or your initial decay stage. From this point on, we're ventilation-limited. We're now producing more fuel than we have oxygen to burn. We get our initial decay. An event takes place. That event happens to be ventilation. In this case, we open the front door. Then we get a second growth stage. At some point during that growth stage is flashover. Flashover is not a stage of fire growth. It's an event. It's a momentary event that takes place during that growth stage and that growth stage continues. At some point, when we've got fire completely coming out of that front door, and that flow path only exists at the front door, you got flames coming out of the front door, you see air going in low, flames coming out of the top, it's burning there because it ran out of oxygen, and that's the only place it can find the oxygen. That's fully developed. It can't get any bigger. It's responding to the oxygen, it hit a peak. So now we're in our first fully developed stage. So the fire isn't vented, it's venting. You give it more air. In this case, we vent the roof. We get another growth stage. More fire, more energy is being produced. And then once we've got fire coming out of the front door and fire coming out of the roof, we hit a fully developed stage again. So we've got a new fully developed stage that is above the other fully developed stage because we're burning more now. And then we go ahead and we hit it with some water and then we get to the K stage. What would happen if we went ahead and took that window out after we made the roof bed? We'd come up again, another growth stage, another fully developed stage, until we get water on it or we run out of fuel one or 
two, and then we get to the decay stage. I think we have a lot of folks out, out there that believe when the fire's showing from the structure, it's vented. We're all good. It's coming out. Well, you're all good because you know where it is. But if you keep making openings to a ventilation-limited fire, you will keep having fire coming out of the openings. Here's a fire we had in Prince George's County that my company was third new engine on. If there was a bread and butter house fire, this is the bread and butter house fire. Very small ranch house. Engine and truck crew arrive almost simultaneously. Little smoke showing. Cakewalk. Truck crew gets their masks on, force the front door, they go in, they start a search. They're coordinating with the hose line, right? It's right here, it's ready to go. Well, the lineman from the engine crew took his 100 foot shoulder load and dumped it in the porch area. He didn't have enough time to flake it out by the time he got water. So he gets water and now he's got 100 feet of tangled knotted spaghetti. He's not getting water to the nozzle. He doesn't communicate this to the truck crew inside. They're focused on getting water, things like that. The only fuel load in this entire house, house happened to be vacant, was a sofa and an end table in the living room. It's the only thing that was in the entire house. All right, I've got a truck crew inside. I'm having trouble getting the line in place. I think. What do we need to do to cool it off for that truck crew inside? Well, let's ventilate more. So we go ahead and take out the sliding glass door in the front. More air, air really close to where the fire wanted that air, and it responds very quickly. This two minutes is two minutes after this picture. We have two firefighters in the rear of the structure searching the bedrooms that are lucky enough to orient themselves in the right direction, run through the fire, hit this wall right out here in front, and have another crew pull them up and out of the porch area, essentially on fire. They got some burns, but they survived. They got lucky. We should have been going to a funeral for this in all intent purposes. They didn't get water to the line. Once they get water, they actually they knock the fire down with a hole that was in the hose line, either from a piece of glass or from the heat, directed that into the fire and knocked the fire down. Doesn't take a lot of water to knock out these ventilation limited fires. Forcing the front door is ventilation. Here's another one that we've, we've overlooked for some time. Do we teach fire behavior with forcible entry? Probably almost never. However, a doorway is the best possible way to ventilate a ventilation-limited fire. It goes all the way to the ground, which is ideal. So your air can go in low and some hot gases can come out high. It's one of the most efficient ways we have to grow a fire. So if you've got a ventilation-limited fire, which we had in the one-story house and the two-story house, from the moment the front vent gets open until flashover, you're looking at like 60 seconds to two and a half minutes, depending on a couple variables, just by opening the front door. Do we ever show up, chop the front door open before the hose line's ready to go? All the time. Do we show up as chiefs, want to see what conditions we have, pop the front door, and leave it open? Of course we do. Do we have cops that get that front door open all the time before we get there because they happen to be around the corner? Do we get neighbors that find ways to get doors open? Absolutely. Best way to grow a fire. Who knows how long that door's been open? Maybe the occupant left it open. Maybe they forced it open. The fire's not going to wait for you to get your line together and get your mask on. It's going to respond to that oxygen. Oh, we need that. <laughs> Never mind. So, what if we were to control the front door? 
We always don't have front door, there's the fire. It's not always that easy. Sometimes you've got to advance into the structure to go ahead and put the fire out. If you can delay the chance that it becomes a race between how fast you can get in there and how fast the air can get in there, if you're not really tight with your 90 seconds, you want to do everything you can to limit the oxygen going in through that front door. So even if you have a hose line going in through that front door, straight in, and you still leave the door open about a foot and a half, that two-thirds that you're blocking that opening has a really positive impact on slowing that fire growth down. It kind of gives you yourself a little bit of a buffer. Here's what that looks like. The one on the left, we force it all the way open, allow the hose crew to go in, and then we pull it closed so it's only open so a two-inch line can go straight through the front door. The one on the right, we just kick it all the way open. How big is the gap on the door on the left? The gap on the door is about a foot and a half. <laughs> Same fire load. Same fire load. Everything else is identical. So what does that look like? Well, we also combine this with a, with a vertical ventilation test. The way we triggered vertical ventilation was as soon as we hit 400 degrees Fahrenheit at three feet, at your head where it would be extremely hot. So what we saw, from the door wide open to the door control, there was about a three minute lag in reaching 400 degrees at three feet. That's an extra three minutes of getting water on that fire. In the two-story, in the two-story, we've got a fire in the back of the house, so the door is further away from where the fire is. Longer flow path for that, for that air to take to get to the fire. We thought the fire was going to go out when we controlled the door. Versus wide open, we went 400 degrees, in about nine minutes, or I'm sorry, in about uh, 12 minutes, versus leaving the door control, thought the fire was going to put itself out. So we wound up opening it all the way to continue to grow it so we could do the vertical ventilation piece of the test. Door control is a temporary action. I recommend, as the, whoever the guy is you have at the front door pinch point advancing line, as one hand on the doorknob controlling the door, and the other hand is feeding line into the crew. Any little bit, whether it's half or two-thirds or whatever, that he's stopping that oxygen from going in through that front door, he's buying that crew time to put water on the fire. Once water gets on the fire, open the door. That's when you're winning the battle. It's all about winning the battle. The fire's going to create a certain amount of energy. If you're taking away more energy with your hose line than that fire is creating, vent your heart out. Open it up, you've won the battle, the smoke will lift. If that fire is producing more energy than you're taking away and you ventilate, conditions will get worse. It's all about that heat release rate, it's all about that ventilation limit. Door control is not only for hose line advancement. I'm not suggesting you search ahead of the hose line, but if you have to, and I understand there's conditions where you may have to, my kid is in that room right there, and you're going to go by way of the interior, one of the best things you can possibly do is control that door behind you. That way it's not a race. If you can buy yourself three extra minutes or more to get that victim and get them out before it flashes on you because you don't have any means to slow it down because you don't have a hose line, this is a tool to consider. It's not only for the front door. If you're moving your way through a house, every door that you can control, you can cut yourself off from the flow path and buy yourself plenty of time to search the area you're in. Or if things go to shit on you and you need to get out, and you can get between where the fire is and a closed door, you're going to buy yourself all kinds of time because you're not the flow path anymore. 
People get concerned about the door relatching and things like that after you force it. Use a tool. If it's only open a little bit, you're doing a heck of a lot of good.